Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Susan Smith. You're in my studio, Stitched by Susan. Today, we are quilting the zigzag quilt. It's kind of a semi-custom project, and I invite you to watch over my shoulder while I work. You won't want to miss a minute. Back in a moment. Welcome to Quilting's first reality show, live and unscripted with Susan Smith. Hello everyone again, I'm Susan, coffee cup in hand. That intro is courtesy of our son Will, who does a few of them for me in different voices and imitations, and they are so fun. So yes, this morning we are going to be quilting a project from end to end. I already have the backing loaded, but I'll show you the loading up of the quilt. There's some points of interest in that that you might want to see. We're going to be talking about thread choices for a multicolored quilt, how I came up with the quilting design, and how I in fact audition the design, audition, without actually quilting it, and how that can really work for you too and be a time saver and save ripping out, and a few other topics as we go. But a little housekeeping before we get into it. If you are enjoying this show, please like and subscribe and even share with your friends that you think would enjoy this too. If you click on the bell, you will receive notifications as well whenever I do go live. So that's important. Um, this show, we call it Live and Unscripted because it is live streaming. It's in real time. Um, the oopses are included. There's no editing after the fact. So these Live and Unscripted shows, I try to air the first and third Friday of each month. And I do send out a newsletter in advance, usually showing a picture of the project and some of the topics that will be in it to give you a heads up. And if there's any changes in scheduling as well, that comes in my newsletter. If you're not already receiving my newsletter and would like to, just head to my website, stitchedbysusan.com, and you'll get a little pop-up form. You know them. You see them on everybody's website. That will just, no matter what it says, it might be a free class I'm offering. All of those things will get you on my newsletter and then you'll get notifications of these events. So again, like and subscribe. That really helps me a lot. Um, what else do we want to talk about? A few things. One of the ways that you can support this show, if you wish to, is super simple. There's a little website. Dave's going to put a link on the screen. Buymeacoffee.com. Support my habit. Um, but this little, little app lets you make a contribution as little as $5. You can, if you wish, um, make it one time or make it a monthly recurring event. And all of the money that we receive from that, we put into bettering our camera recording video equipment for this show. So we have recently purchased two new cameras. All this time we've been doing our episodes just on iPhones. We had four iPhones going. So we now have two real live cameras. And so that is thanks to all of you who have been very generous in contributing there. Also, in the fall, I launched a membership, which is the same types of quilting that I'm doing here, but more in depth. And honestly, that membership, which is a paid subscription, really is what makes this show possible. So here you're getting, you know, kind of a smattering of different designs and different styles and different quilts because they're often client quilts. In that membership, I go in depth in more projects with more designs, teaching them, demoing them, step by step showing them. So if you're interested in that, um, also information on my website, stitchedbysusan.com, or shoot me an email, info at stitchedbysusan.com. And I don't want to overwhelm you with, with links and so forth. Um, I'm in the process at the moment of redesigning my website. So forgive me if you don't see everything there that you expect. Just shoot me an email and I'll answer you with any information you need. And on my social media channels, there's always information about the membership and so forth too. You can find me. Stitched by Susan everywhere. Let me just look at my notes here. What else am I missing? Oh, a couple more things. Um, if you're looking for some easy listening, I also have a podcast, Measure Twice, Cut Once, and other life lessons learned from quilters. So that can be found too on my website or podcast.stitchedbysusan.com. Dave and I were sitting at the table this morning with our first cup of coffee talking about the podcast and looking at some of the stats, and it actually has been listened to on six continents. The only one we're missing is Antarctica. So seriously, if you know anybody that knows anybody that's vacationing in Antarctica, maybe ask them to give a listen. We would love to have that on our stats that we've been listened to in all seven continents. It's kind of cool. Anyway, that's the podcast. One other thing that I wanted to tell you about, and this is date sensitive. So if you're watching this after the fact, pay attention to the dates. Today is February 10. 
And this evening, I'm going to be going live on a live shopping channel. So it's it's an app. You can load it on your phone, whatnot.com. And this channel has everything you could wish for if you are a couch shopper. So there's antiques and collectibles and clothes and sports memorabilia and there's a quilting and sewing category. So they've invited me to do a one hour live presentation tonight on that channel. So Dave's going to put a link in the notes for you and I'll tell you as well. This will take you to, to my link on the app and when you go to it, it will offer you a $15 shopping credit and also a giveaway that's happening tonight. So you would go to whatnot.info forward slash stitched by Susan. It's pretty straightforward. And if you go there, you just need to create a login for the app. And then if you attend the live show tonight, you'll be automatically entered in a draw for a, an entire set of red snappers. So if you guys have been watching me at all on these live and unscripteds, you know the way I load my quilts is with the red snapper system. So we're giving away, Whatnot and I together are giving away an entire set long enough for a 12 foot frame to some lucky winner. So if you attend live tonight and you're logged into the app, you will be automatically entered for that and we'll do a draw during the hour show. So it's at 5 p.m. Eastern time. So I keep saying tonight, it's actually in the afternoon for me, but not too many hours away. Okay, I think that's everything. We're gonna get started pretty soon um, and get on to things. Um, Mr. Producer is reminding me, so I'll do this quickly too, because it is important. I like to give credits for the people that contribute. So I mentioned Will, who does the introduction voices for me, but also our good friend Dan um, graciously allows me to use his music, which is not available commercially. I'm sorry you can't buy it. You have to come here to listen. But he lets us use it for the show, and we are so appreciative. And then also my husband, I'm calling him Mr. Producer. His name is Dave. He's behind the mm -hmm. scenes. Oh, the oh, sorry, guys. He thought he had the camera all worked out. <laughs> Must have been a bad hair day. I'll give him a bad time for that. He thought he had a picture of himself up there. But anyway, he's over there behind the cameras and monitors and cords and things like that. But let's get started. One more sip, and we'll get going. Okay. For today's project, I do already have, could, could I have a camera angle that shows my backing, Dave, please, from the side? Okay. I do already have my backing loaded because I was trying to save a little bit of time this morning. I'm not sure how long this will take, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about it before I put the quilt on. So you can see that it is pieced in squares. My client, Laura, who made it, does, does a lot of scrappy quilts and a lot of pieced scrappy backings. And I love them. She does a great job of squaring them up. You notice that the seams are pressed open, which really helps it to lay nice and flat so you don't feel ridges from the seams in the quilt, and it's beautifully made. But one point of interest is this. There is, it's, it's symmetrical, right? So I really want to take care that my quilt not only is in the middle from side to side, but is in the middle from top to bottom too. And of course, I can't see both top and bottom on the long arm. So before I loaded it, I laid it out on the floor and determined where my quilt needed to be placed in order to be centered. And I put, you probably can't quite see it, but I just put a giant pin where that top edge of my quilt is going to be. So that now when I go to load it up, I'm just gonna line up the top of that with my pin. And I'm fairly confident that within a half inch at the most, when I get to the bottom, that will appear to the eye to be centered. So this is not a show quilt, right? This is a, actually a quilt that's going to hospice. So. I'm, I'm centering it as well as I can, but it's not millimetrically correct, but that's my simple way of doing it. So my little pin is marked up here. I'm going to grab the batting. And I am today using my trusty favorite Hobbs 80-20. So the 80% is cotton, the 20% is poly. Cotton makes it soft, makes it warm. The poly makes it a little bit more lofty, helps it to not um, hold creases as much. And I like that about this batting. Actually, I'm going to do it at the other end so you can see. Watch this. I left another point of conversation in here just for you guys. Mr. Producer, would you reach me a pair of scissors out of the second drawer there? I did forget to have my scissors ready. So I'm lining up my batting a little bit above that pin because I want it to extend above the top edge of my quilt just a hair, maybe an inch. And you notice on this side over here, that my batting is longer than my quilt backing. 
for in my opinion it does not do to leave that in place because this floppy edge will continually get in the way might even get caught in the rails or the wheels as they're turning so i'm just going to fold my whole sheet of batting up and fold it up again because it's pretty easy to cut through four layers semi-accurately and then i'm just going to cut that excess off It gets in the way, like I said, of the long arm. And also, you need the ability to be able to clamp the sides of the backing, and you've got to have access to them. We'll just throw that off camera. It's gone. All right. Let's smooth our batting out. Good. And I'll grab the quilt top. You see what I mean by zigzag quilts? Isn't that pretty? So again, I'm watching for my pin, which is now covered up by my batting, but I can just fold the batting back and see it. I'm watching my the seams in my backing that run up and down. That's what I'm gauging the centering of my quilt from side to side on and I'm just doing it visually. I don't have specific measuring in place. There we go. Nice and smooth. Okay, I'm going to bring Stella over and start basting, but apparently there are some questions about the loading. So let's see the questions. Christine, did you find an efficient way to load like you did on Lucy? I think I have found a pretty good way, Christine, and it, it's it's largely the same other than on this leader up here. I kind of pick up the tail of it and wrap it around. I've got a, um, a dead bar or a leveler, some call it, which you guys can't see. It's, it's resting right on top of my quilt. And so I literally flipped the leader up over that and then proceeded as I did before on Lucy. That seems to be working pretty good. I may still experiment with more ways, but for the moment, that's where we're at. I'm just going to check a few of my settings here before we start stitching. And I've been experimenting, honestly, with using the basting stitch. It's not a thing that I typically did on Lucy. Um, I just usually went ahead and stitched um, my basting with the same length stitch that I did my quilting. But... It's good to experiment with new things. You might find a feature that you like about that. Uh, hang on a second here. Do, 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 do. Okay, we've got our threads anchored. Here's a couple lock stitches. So this is something that Stella has um, that Lucy did not is the little red lights, which are the stitch regulator. So as I go on today, I will try to quilt without the stitch regulator on because I think it might make a better view. But for the moment, that's what those little red lights are and we have to leave them on. And I may have to take a moment to stop and talk to Mr. Producer because this handlebar, Dave, is in the way and is not going to work. So bear with us a second. We are going to adjust let me get on cam. There is no way to get on camera. Do you want to put me on for a second? There we go. Um, here's what we're doing. Stella has two handlebars that curve up. And on my left handlebar, Dave's got the camera attached. And the angle is good for you guys to see. But it is so low that it won't go over my left arm. So we're just going to make an adjustment to that camera. So bear with us a second while we do that. I need this arm to go up. Oh, oh. I've got to be able to get my arm under there. I'm sure we will. Is that enough? Would it be more than that? That's enough. better. Hardly enough. Is that? Good. Let's try it. So now you're going to um, probably see a different camera view as he changes that around. Messes with the angle a little bit. So our apologies. We're still honestly learning many features about this machine and we'll probably do this more often 
make changes on the fly. So I do have my channel lock on at the moment and the way that works on Stella is that one of the belts from the Qmatic or um, computerized system is locked in place. So I've got that belt locked so that I can't move my machine vertically. So I'm getting a lovely straight line horizontally. And I'm just using my fingers to both make sure that my quilt um, is falling under the needle evenly in the straight line, right? I'm using that to make my straight top edge and also to make sure that I'm not pushing any excess fabric out in front of me. And I've just got a quarter inch basting stitch on right now. So there's my top edge, nice and square and straight. And I'm walking around to take my channel lock off. And I will say on this side at the moment, I don't have a channel lock on. I could, same process. I could lock my one direction in place, but I can visually see that the side of the quilt is straight and I'm okay with freehanding that straight line. So let's lock those basting stitches a bit and grab a clippers. Do, 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 do. Clippers. So now I'm going to put my side clamps on. These are just long, slim clamps that put a little tension on the outside edge of the quilt. My goal is to have all four sides stable so that my quilt does not shift at all while I'm quilting. These clamps that I'm using are part of the Red Snapper brand. Um, what I like about them, and this comes in some other brands too, is that they're very long. So they hold that whole expanse of the quilt um, in the throat of my machine nice and firmly, as opposed to just having a single clamp here and a single clamp there. It's a little bit tricky when you have seam allowances to feed into them. It sometimes takes a moment. And I don't have a lot of tension on these, just enough, just enough that the quilt is held flat. It's not tight like a drum. Can't beat on my drum. So that covers left, top, right with tension. And now for the front, I'm using my trusty magnetic bars. These are the type that you would get at the hardware store for tools in your shop or knives in your kitchen. And they just clamp onto these rails. And I should make mention here too, because people ask this question a bunch. Most long arms recommend that your quilt backing is loaded onto this bar. And uh, there's some different bar orientations, but certainly that is true for Bernina. This is actually the backing bar. So usually my backing would be wrapped multiple times around that. I choose not to because I float my tops, which means it's hanging down right here, right? and I go to the trouble of securing all of these four sides. And in order to use my magnetic bars, of course, I've got to be able to reach that metal. So having a multi-roll decreases that magnetism, right? So I choose to load my backing on the bottom bar, which you guys can't see, it's underneath. So it's going over here and down and then rolling up on a bar that's right in front of my thighs. That's just my personal um, choice. Okay, um, I'm gonna talk for just a second about my thread choices and actually get started into the quilting. And then we're gonna circle back around. A lot of you are asking the questions about why the new machine, why I've switched brands or what it is I love about this brand. And so give me a few minutes. I think this is the best way. I'll get my thread talking done and get started quilting. And then as I quilt, I'll chat with you a little bit about that because it is a question for sure. How does that sound? Are there questions about loading still? Okay, let's have a couple loading questions then before I go on. Let me get another sip. 
I'm so parched this morning. I don't know what it is. Just not enough coffee. Nan Smith, channel of penguin. Oh my gosh. Jana, tell us again about the giveaway. Okay, sure. So the giveaway is connected to a live shopping channel and it's called Whatnot. And you can search for it in your apps. It's easiest to use on your phone. I'll tell you that for sure. So they have lots and lots of shopping um, categories, if you will. There's, I don't think there's cars and vehicles, but certainly there's memorabilia and sports equipment and antiques and estate sales and sports cards and just all kinds of things. But also there's a quilting and sewing category. So Whatnot invited me to come on for an hour live and talk this evening, 5 p.m. Eastern, about quilting. I'm going to be offering some quilt backing, kind of like a D-stash and some finished quilts for sale. And doing a giveaway for the Red Snapper loading system, which is not very easy to show you because I've got, I can show you a part. Hang on a second here. Look it, I've got my baby clips right here. That's what I've loaded my quilt with. So what it means is you've got a little plastic, this same red material, heavy duty plastic. There's a little rod loaded into the leaders. And then these clips, which are kind of C-shaped, snap down over them. So that's the loading system I use. If you look in some of my other episodes, I show that many, many times. And I love it. It's really time efficient, um, pretty accurate, easy to use. So we're giving away one set of those enough for a 12 foot machine. So now I've given you a ton of details. Here's what you do. Whatnot.info forward slash stitched by Susan. So that'll take you to my link on the app and it will offer you a $15 credit for shopping, but you do have to create a login information. It's just like any other app that you would use. You have to give, you know, it's an email address and a password. At that point, if you attend the live show, you're automatically entered in the draw and, and a name will be drawn. They have a whole randomized system on their end. Name will be drawn while I'm on air and we will send out that red snapper system to someone. So whatnot.info forward slash stitched by Susan. Clear enough? Yes, Good deal. Okay, M Mr. Producer is mentioning, and, and this is a side note. If you already have an account, that link will not work for you. It is for new accounts only because of course they're trying to attract people to the app. I did not know of anyone that had it, so maybe I'm on an assumption that you don't yet, but maybe you do. Anyway, it is for new account users. Okay, apparently there's more loading questions. Becky, I usually put my clamps and clips on before I baste, but I noticed you do not. Is it better to do your basting with the clamps on the side and the magnets? My personal preference, Becky, is to baste before I have done my um, side tension. And here's why. I feel like if I put clamps, even with a little tension, onto the backing, and then I lay my quilt top on there, there's going to be more tension on that backing and it's going to be stretched a little tighter than the top. So I prefer to baste it while both backing and top are still relaxed. And then when I do put my side clips on and the basting is there, it puts equal tension across all the layers. That's my thinking for that one. And another, the bottom bar in front of you that holds the back, does it roll away from you then lock in place? I'm trying to reconfigure my machine to load like you so I can use the magnets. The fabric comes around this bar and goes this way. So yes, I roll, roll, roll on that bottom bar. And it does lock in that direction. That's right. And one more from Christine. Would black electrical tape over the lights cover the red lights? Sure it would, but then I wouldn't have a stitch regulator. I need, I need the stitch regulator to work. Um, Carolyn, I tend to have my tension on the quilt too tight. Any tips on how to know your tension is almost perfect? I actually do. Another quilter passed this on to me years and years ago. If you put your hand kind of fingers up, boop, boop, under the quilt, you should be able to grasp the tips of your fingers. Like there should be enough give. You've only got enough tension so that it's not literally sagging or has the possibility of wrinkling. It is, it is not a drum. You can see there's, there's plenty of, of, you know, movability in there. So yeah, that's my simple tip. Okay. We're going to get on to talking about choices for today. 
Thread choices on a quilt that has multiple colors like this is always a thing. And, you know, ask any two quilters and you'll probably get three different answers. But here's my opinion. I like to have thread that blends similarly across all the fabrics, right? So I don't choose the lightest color generally, and I don't choose the darkest color generally. I go for somewhere in the middle so that it kind of shows up the same across the whole quilt. That is particularly because of my style of quilting. I'm using the same thread and I'm going across all different fabrics, right? And so I want it to look good on all of them and not to totally disappear and blend with some of them. So here are the choices that I, some of the choices that I considered today. Um, and I had a fourth one and I probably put it away. Anyway, here's three. This was kind of my first choice because it's this warm caramely color and it's about the shade of some of the darkest lights, if that makes sense. And it's really, really pretty. I love this color. So that was my first thought, but I got thinking about my quilting design, which we're going to talk about in a minute. I have a design in my head and there's much more of it on the dark fabrics and only a very little on the light fabrics. So then I thought, I'm going to air toward the darker shades this time for this quilt. So then I picked, I had these two in mind, and this is a very coppery, also super pretty. It's the color of some of the lighter of the dark fabrics. And also I picked a rich brown. Now this is quite a dark brown. The one I actually picked, and this is the fourth one I didn't grab an extra spool of, is a few shades lighter than this. So this dark brown would have worked as well, but it is one of the darkest shades in the quilt. So I just backed off a little bit from that, and that's what we're going to be quilting with. So really any of these would have been fine, but that's how I thought through what to choose for today's quilt. So none of them are wrong choices for sure. Okay, let's talk a bit about quilting design. Let me get my supplies. What I've got here is a plexiglass sheet. Mine is 18 inches by 24. Just got it at the hardware store. And I love these with a dry erase marker and a scrap piece of batting for an eraser to lay right on my quilt and play around with designs. I call them my audition boards. It's a lot easier than undoing quilting to just, right? So in thinking about this quilt, I thought, you know, I've got this lovely zigzag piecing I could use that to do something a little bit elevated from an edge to edge, but still no marking would be involved because the piecing's done all the work for me, right? So that's kind of what I've settled on. I want to do just a, a simple wavy line in the lighter shade. So I'm literally going to wave through the middle. And I quilt better than I draw. Trust me on this one. Basically like that. And then in the darker ones, I'm going to do kind of L-shaped loops, uh, calligraphy type L's, handwriting type L's. This idea. And they're just going to be side by side by side by side all the way through this darker zig. We'll call it the zig and we'll call the other one the zag, right? But further, and this is me kind of going down a rabbit hole, certainly you could do it just like that and call it good. But because I'm who I am, I took it further and I got thinking to myself, now, is there a way, should I have a loop, you know, right over the seam or should I have a loop on each side of the seam? What about the top angle? What about the bottom angle? Could I make that better? And what I decided on is that, yes, I could make that better. In my up corners, I am going to have a loop. And in my down corners, I'm going to have one on each side. And I'll show you why. That's not a good example though. They're hard to see, so I'm going to move them up on the light just so you can see them. But here's why I thought this. Because my um, every other stripe is very lightly quilted, I want this one to have good coverage and particularly for these kind of bulky seam allowances to be stitched down as well as I can. If I were to go this way on the upper loops, I'm going to have this, this whole area around this seam allowance. Do you see? has no quilting in it. And, you know, again, it's not wrong, but there's a better way in my opinion. And that's to get the loop tip right up in there. And it's going to make that lay much flatter. Similarly, at this bottom edge, I'm going to have the, the joiner between the two loops at the bottom be hitting this area of seams. Does that make sense? That's today's mini lesson.
And then one last thing. One thing that you can't do with a design audition board like this is see it sort of in three dimensions. So I'm not positive if this little wavy line doodad is going to be enough quilting in the lighter zigs and zags, but I'm going to give it a try. And if I decide it's not enough, then I'll think about what else to add. So you guys can kind of be watching that and forming your own opinions as to whether it's enough quilting for that or not. Keeping in mind, this is, this is a hospice based quilt. This is not like a wedding gift for a formal wedding or anything like that, right? So that's going to influence my decision and how detailed I get with the quilting as well. So yep, yeah, once again, audition board, batting eraser. Okay, people, I think we're ready, honestly, to start quilting. We were going to talk about why the change of machine. Um, let me just, I'm going to go ahead and get started quilting you guys so that I can be doing this kind of while we chat. And what I'm going to do, I think, is first do a couple of the, um, the light zigs. Whoop, still got my basting on. Hang on a second. Okay, you guys bear with me for just a minute. Dave's talking in my one ear and I'm trying to make a decision and listen all at the same time. So let me listen to him for a second and see what's up. Okay, apparently there is a question asking if I'm stitching in the ditch on the zigzags and the answer is no, I'm not. And that has solely to do with, with time constraints, right? That would easily double my time on this quilt, maybe triple or four times it, right? So there's, there's no need for that. For something that is a lap and comfort quilt right and but that is why i'm taking the time to make my loops hit to make the best possible result with the least possible amount of fussiness on my part okay you guys here's what i'm going to do because stella is still so new to me and things are not automatic i'm just going to be quiet and get started quilting for a few minutes i promise i will circle back around to talking about the machine but let me just get things underway here. And I will stitch in constant mode because then it does turn the lights off. Let's just see where we are for speed. Do, 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 do. How's that for visibility? Let us know in the comments. Okay, I am going to do one more thing with my audition board. And this is for reals how I work in my studio. Um, is Stella in the way, Dave? Can you get a better view? Okay, Mr. Producer's thinking about views. I'm just gonna do one more thing, which is take another minute to practice my loops and how many of them I want to fit in. Again, so much easier to do this on the audition board than having to undo stitching, right? So I'm just going to go over a few of my zigs and zags till I've concluded what that spacing should look like. And that's not right because I want a loop on each side. So let's see. 
I don't know how well you can see this, but this to me is important because it just helps me know where I'm going before I put needle to fabric. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, and then the middle one. I think that will do it. You guys can't really see it, but you can get the gist of what I'm doing, right? I'm just practicing those loops, how many will fit, how closely I can space them. Far easier to practice on my audition board than on my actual quilt and then find, oh, I've done a zig and a zag and I don't like it and now I've got a half an hour of undoing. I'm going to do this first one on manual mode. You guys will have to bear with the lights because I, again, can't think about all the things at once. I'm just stretching my loops to fit my zigzag shape. Alright, now we're going to take a look and make some decisions about this. And the question is, you know, is my, is my little wavy area providing enough coverage? Is, are my loops holding down these seam allowances firmly enough? And I got to tell you, my answer is yes. Your answer might be different. Someone has asked already, are you not stitching in the ditch on those zigs and zags? You know, I certainly could. It certainly would give a crisper, more finished look. 
but I'm keeping in mind the use of this quilt, right? It is going to get washed. It is going to cover a lap. It's going into hospice, right? So someone's going to love it, but not going to care whether those seams are stitched down in the ditch. Honestly, they're never going to notice. It's still going to be a beautiful texture. And here's my promise to you. When I get this finished today, I will take some good photos with some lighting that shows up the quilting and shows how those seams lay. And I'll post them on social media so that you can judge for yourself. This is not a, a right or a wrong answer. This is just what I choose for the purposes of this quilt. So I'm deciding, yep, that's enough quilt. I quite like the contrast between the loops, which have quite a bit of quilting in them, and this puffy area. I think it's going to emphasize this striped zigzag look. And I like that. So I'm happy with it. So I'm going to take another sip of coffee. And I'm finding that I can't both quilt this and do much talking at the same time. So I'm going to take a minute to talk about the change of machine and I'll just be like two minutes so that if you're, you know, watching this in the replay and you don't want to hear it, push that 15 second advance a couple times. Want to put me on the front camera, hon? Okay, machine change. Because let's face it, it is a big deal to change long arm brands when you quilt as much as I do and when the movements and motions and features are so automatic. I've done almost 1200 quilts, all freehand. Um, on Lucy 1.0 and Lucy 2.0 because I've had two of them already. But there were a few things that influenced me to change. One of them is, and I don't think this was the first factor, but I grew into this one. I'm finding it's very rewarding and challenging to push myself to learn something new. And it's making me a better resource for you because I'm now familiar with at least two brands, very familiar. And I see even where differences lie and how what I think of as the way to load a quilt, right? I understand that may be different for you and then different for Jane and then different again for Mary, right? So it's making me a more experienced, a broader experience um, in my quilting so that I have more resource to offer you. So I'm glad for that as I get going. But there were a few things that I was looking for in a long arm. Um, one of them is I'm doing more and more filming. So whether it's uh, producing YouTube videos or live streaming like this or filming lessons for my membership or for my online course, all those things, I need the best possible way to show you what I'm doing, the best possible view of what I'm doing because you're trying to translate this into your own machine. And I, I do have a huge... Um, uh, freehand quilting masterclass, I call it, which is a number of modules, many freehand designs that has already been released for a couple of years. And the number one request that I get from my students is it's difficult to see because I had to film from the side of the machine that you're sitting at now. And so they were looking at it basically upside down and I'm looking at it from this side. So the number one ask was, can you find a way to film it from where you're standing? because we're having to kind of translate it's upside down, right? Some people were even turning their iPad around and watching it upside down. So that was really big in my hunt for a new machine. And it just so happened that the brand I use, this is, it's not a knock against the brand, it's just the way it's designed. It has like a, a headlamp across the front, which works beautifully, shines right on your needle, shines right on your stitching area until you go and try and film that with a camera, right? And it was just right in the viewfinder. So that was a really big factor. I was looking for something that had that good field of vision for filming. Something else. Sure. Mr. Producer is going to aim the camera at this. And you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So Stella is still attached. I can't move her a ton. But this is where the camera is right now that you guys are seeing the close-up views on. And I could not have one there before because I had a light bar. And another great feature of this one and some other long arms is that the handles are infinitely adjustable. So I can do whatever I want with them. So a lot of the little reels that I produce of just a few seconds of quilting, I'll have this handlebar lifted right out of the picture. And I can be shining a camera right in here, quilting with my right hand, and it gives a great view. So that is a really, really cool feature for me, that ability to shift those handlebars wherever I want to get that great view. The Bernina also has some features that are very cool. And as I'm, as I'm on the event team and um, doing some shadowing and training, I'm learning more and more. This is the thing that I wanted and looked forward to and I'm enjoying it. The Bernina is um, 
in many ways closer to your sewing machine than your long arm. And what I mean by that is it uses sewing machine needles. So you have them in your drawer all the time, but also you can use specialty needles. You can use twin needles or triple needles or do fine things like that or couching or all these things that are more artistic maybe and more detailed maybe and less industrial than my last machine was perhaps. So, you know, I keep emphasizing these are not rights and wrongs. These are just features. One machine has these features. Another machine has these. Another machine has those. There's different machines that are right for each person. But the more I'm getting to know my Bernina, the more I'm loving these, the precision work that I can do, the way that it runs like a Cadillac, forms a beautiful stitch. Like There's just lots of things that I'm coming to love. But those were some of my reasons for changing. Did I cover them well, Mr. Producer? Oh, apparently some of you are asking where Lucy is going. I need an assistant, apparently. Lucy is for sale, and I keep meaning to post pictures in Facebook groups, so so watch out for that. I'll try and do that this week. Um, it is a computerized system as well, so it's not your, your very entry-level machine. It's kind of a mid-level, um, but I'll post pictures and all the details and things that come with it. I will really try and get that done for you. Okay. Sue Tap, don't forget to take the scissors off the quilt. Did you notice? I just picked them up. But thank you for that reminder. Okay, that's the thing I love best about you guys. Every so often people will be like, hey, you forgot the side clamps or hey, you forgot the magnets. So I appreciate that. Christine is asking, gonna, Nate, gonna donate to the Buy Me A Coffee Fund. I think another camera right overhead and zoomed in would give us a bird's eye view when you use the audition board. You're, you're right, Christine. Uh, you're right. We'll think, we'll think that one through. It's, it's another thing that I would have to think about because it would be in one fixed place, right? And I got to not get my head under it and put my audition board in the right place. Do you know what I mean? But we will, but we will think that through. We'll try to. So thanks for that. Um, okay. I'm going to go ahead and do another strip or two of quilting and then I will take a pause again. I am going to put my scissors right at the front. I don't yet have a place on Stella for them. i um, going to do a little more quilting and then fire any questions that you have at me about the actual quilting. And what I'm going to do right now is just forward the quilt about an inch and I'll be able to do a whole nother strip without doing a full advance, if that makes sense. I think that'll do it. I'm just going to double check. So all I've done is scooted my magnets a hair and forwarded the whole thing. I've just got to see if I can get to the bottom. Absolutely. Okay, we're in business. Okay, you guys, I am going to leave the stitch regulator on. Um, I just don't have enough comfort at this point to do this without the stitch regulator. So bear with me. Little red lights are part of today's show.
I didn't get those loops quite right, but you notice I'm just keeping on going. indeed counting every pass so that's partly why I can't talk and quilt because I am counting every single zig and zag Great time to fire off your questions if you have any about the quilting. I'm going to undo all of my securing apparatus. I think I've asked this before. What is the plural? Is it just apparatus? Surely it's not apparati, is it? I'm sure one of you knows and can tell me. zigs and zags I can pass through. I think that's about it. Here's something I always do as I am forwarding. I'll do this one thing and then take some more questions. You notice I'm kind of grabbing and pinching and pulling. I'm trying to grab the batting with the quilt and tug it down. I find if I don't do that, my batting center tends to migrate a bit as I'm quilting. If you're not comfortable that that's doing enough for you this is the beauty of a folding top you can just flip it up double check that your batting's all smooth that it's not you know working its way toward the center or anything like that put the quilt back down over it and I'm gonna take a sip and answer some of your questions okay let's go what camera are we on babe Okay. Uh, question. Sue Tap. It is just apparatus. Thank you for that. Trust another Susan to know that, to love words like I do. Yeah. More questions are coming. Diane from the Wikishinary. <laughs> okay, I'm not even going to read them all because, oh my word. <laughs> Hypercorrect is apparatus. Okay, that's just funny. That's just funny. Okay, Laura. Susan, I'm thrilled to have watched you quilt my quilt. This is Laura's quilt. I have to tell your viewers the basting around the edges is key. Every quilt comes back straight. I have to go to an appointment finish later. Fantastic. See, it's so nice to hear from a client like that, that that is helpful and useful to have a quilt that has a square and straight edge and also an edge that can no longer stretch. Like that quilt's shape is fixed. Sandy, thoughts about a dead bar? I don't have one. Oh gosh, Sandy, my last machine did not have one either. So I don't feel like they're essential, but one of the things that changes, and I might need a different view for this, Dave, please, and either side. One of the things that changes is this upper bar now is the take-up bar that my puffy quilt gets loaded onto. And it just, you can't quite see it, but the quilt is passing under that dead bar and up over this one. So in my last machine, there was just one bar here and it was lower down on the quilt. And if you watched any of my other episodes, you can put my face back on, please. Um, if you've watched any of my other episodes, you've seen me many times adjust my take up bar because it rested on my long arm. And so I had to adjust that betwixt and between as the quilt got puffier, etc. So it's just different. It's just different. They both work well. More questions? Pam, I'm wondering if you ever have trouble with the loops where two colors meet. I keep thinking I would want to stop at the color change instead of the whole zigzag section. I would want to stop. Oh, I see. 
I mean, the, the stitching lines are not crossing. I'm not quite sure what you mean, where the two fabric colors meet or where the two thread colors meet. So maybe clarify that for me. I'm not sure that I'm grasping your question quite right. Sorry. Carol, I've noticed that you don't stitch all the way to the seam. Any particular reason? Well, Carol, I don't want to, if you mean with my loops, I don't want to go overshoot the seam because that will really show up. It's a fairly dark thread on those lighter fabrics. So I'm just trying to stitch as close to it as I can without going over. And I'm, you know, an eighth of an inch away, thereabouts. Shelby, a friend made me an apron that I wear while I quilt. It keeps my snip, seam ripper, etc. handry while I work and avoids me having to run from one end of the frame to the other when I need a tool. Shelby, I might give that a try. I even have one, like a like a bartender's apron in my in my sewing machine drawer that I used to wear. And I just I find that I run in for a few minutes to quilt and then leave and then and it wasn't great for me, but maybe I have to retrain myself because you're right, I do spend a lot of time running back and forth. I get my steps in though. Just saying. Okay, more questions? <laughs> Christine, any YouTube milestones we can help you with? I watch at least four to five hours of your video a day. Holy smokes. Well, thank you for that. Um, gosh, I don't I don't know what to say. I think sharing is what's most important to me at this point. I think I have something that's really helpful to other quilters, which is this realistic view of what processing a quilt actually looks like. Um, and I would love to grow my viewership for sure. So liking, sharing, um, interaction helps as well with that algorithm to get it visible. Pam Wilman, fabric colors. Okay. So are you meaning, I'm sorry, Pam, that I keep drilling down in this, like within my dark fabrics, my thread just works seamlessly across all of them. I definitely don't want to change in there. Are you thinking you would have changed threads to go in the light zigzags? And certainly one could. Again, I'm opting to be efficient with my time. So I purposely chose a thread that I thought filled both purposes. Yep, do you want a different view? I have a lanyard for my neck. I keep my scissors on. I never lay them down. They would something drive me crazy. You know, I think I have one of those from times past too. It's funny how you, you get these systems in place and then you let, you know, you change habits and don't go back to them. And I'm like, I bet I do have a lanyard too. Cause I have thought that is probably a good idea because the scissors are annoying because you need them so often for them to be six feet away. Roberta, I have a Q24 with a thread stand for four spools. I have a cup attached to one for thread spool holders like you had on Lucy. That's a great idea. I don't actually have the fourth, uh, the three and four spool holders, but I might get them just for being a cup holder. But I'm thinking, see, I used to have a blue solo cup and now I need a Bernina red solo cup. So I got to find me one solo cup. <laughs> might have to go buy a bag. Trish, why not place a command hook on the front or side of Stella to hold your scissors? Also a good idea. You guys are a wealth of good ideas. Um, on my last machine, I had actually permanently attached a couple little tiny, tiny bar magnets and that worked too. Pierce, can I ask where you got the camera mount, the one on the handle? Thanks. Um, do you know about the mount? Mr. Producer says he's going to put a link in the comments for you. We've tried different ones. So this is what we currently have settled on because it has about 50 different angles that you can. <laughs> yeah. Any more? That's it for questions. Okay. We're going to get back to basting and then to quilting. I've got that quarter inch basting stitch on again. No, I don't. I have a one inch. Let's change that. Can you see my hand pulling? This is something I do all the time. And I'll stop a second and talk about it. This quilt, though it's beautifully flat because it has seams and because it's fabric, which, you know, is flexible. If I were to just stitch, it would begin to push in front of my hopper foot. So I grasp what's already been stitched and just put the littlest bit of tension on that to keep it feeding under the needle at the pace I want. If my quilt has excess that I need to take in, I pull a little harder and pull it under the needle a little faster. And I'm taking care that that basting line is within the quarter inch seam allowance at the edge as well. I don't want Laura, whose quilt it is, to have to undo the basting stitch. 
it can just safely keep on living in there forever. And before I leave this side, I'm going to get the side clamp on. Bear with me, it takes a little second because I got a couple seam allowances to feed in there. And I suppose an argument could be made for not putting either side clamp on until both sides are basted. I don't feel that that appreciably changes the tension on my quilt. So if I remember, I put the clamp on before I walk across. And if you think I'm crazy putting my finger in front of the needle, I probably am. But again, I've got this, the camera arm kind of in the way of my left arm. So it's a little bit constricting. Making the best of it. Okay. Other clamp. So once again, if you are finding this helpful, useful information, like and subscribe, please. Share with your friends. Um... Smash that bell, as the YouTubers like to say, and then you will receive notifications whenever I go live. I do so appreciate that visibility. Okay. Alrighty, moving my coffee out of the way. It's not really mattering on this design where I start with some of my freehand designs. You know, I alternate which end I start on. This one, it, it's not really mattering. So let's take basting off. I think I am finding the loops honestly easier from left to right, which is not surprising. So I'm going to go ahead and do that first. I'm going to do my squiggly line on the way back. Face those very well. Let's try and do better. You guys counting? I got an extra loop in that one.
that half leg. This quilt is a perfect example of how something that is your everyday quilting or something that you're doing even for a paid project can also serve as really, really good skill building practice. So these loops that I'm quilting, I mentioned when I started the last row that I found it easier from left to right and so that's the way I'm choosing to do them today. That's chiefly because I'm on camera. If I was here quilting by myself, I would purposely make myself do them from right to left over and over and over because it's so important, I feel like, for a free motion quilter to be able to quilt comfortably in all directions. And literally, you are teaching yourself, it's just like learning to write left-handed. You are teaching yourself a skill that does not come easily and it's something that only practice will do. But I, I try to take advantage of those opportunities. When a quilt is in front of me, I don't need to load a practice sandwich, right? To be practicing that. I can be doing it on this project. I don't think I can forward quite enough to finish it in one more pass. So we're going to do a little bit and then a little bit more. Um, okay, we have another good question. Apparently, I'm going to get another sip. Really, I'm so parched this morning. I don't know what the deal is. Apparently, it's funny. Mr. Producer is chuckling. Beverly, do you say things in your head like to the left, to the left, or big loop, little loop? Oh yes, I do. And this is part of the reason why I kind of had to stop talking and focus on quilting. Like certainly my, my five loops, I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Because if I didn't, I would lose track. You saw me do six in the one because I, I just kind of lost track of where I was, right? So yes, I absolutely do coach myself in my mind. And that's hard for me to reproduce on camera, but yes, it happens. B, some long arm machines have an issue with sewing right to left. Have you experienced anything like that with Stella? Honestly, Stella has been really, really good. Now, in my experience, that mostly happened if I was doing a straight line from right to left. That's where I ran into issues and see, I'm not doing that today. Many machines are good as long as you're doing something right to left. Does that make sense? Hopefully it helps. Angie, I have sewed my finger three times on my long arm. Seriously? I met someone the other day who's, who had just done it days before too. I've, I've never done that. I've never experienced that, but I am very sorry for you. You, you better not be pushing fabric with fingertips. <laughs> just say, Joan, how big is the quilt top and how big is an HST unit? Good question, Joan. I will tell you how big the HST units are. I can't tell you the ruler size off the, or the quilt size off the top of my head. Although I did measure it last night. The finished HSTs are four inches. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen of them across. So forty-eight, fifty-six stitches or uh, inches this way. And an HST, by the way, in case you don't know, is a half square triangle. So in this case, it's one of these blocks. Each triangle is half of a square. HST. Quilting lingo. Alrighty. So. I'm going to do a little cheat because this is real life, right? You notice that I advanced the quilt just a little because I can't quite get the whole thing on, right? So I'm going to put my magnets on 
But instead of basting, all, you know, running down what's already basted in order to baste three more inches because that's all I need, I'm just going to drop a pin on each side, right? And I'll catch that basting when I advance it next time. So it's still serving my purpose of making sure my quilt can't pull in as I'm quilting. Just a shortcut on the basting. But I am going to put my clamps back on. They're pretty critical this time. So I'm just getting my side clamps on once again. And also my magnets. One, two, and three. Okay, okay, apparently we have a question on the red snappers. Let's have that. Laura, my clips like that always snap off. How do you make them work? Make sure, Laura, that you're using the right channel to get your fabric in. It's, it only opens about an eighth of an inch, and it's got a some kind of rubbery substance in there. My clamps never fall off. So that's that's my question. Um, yeah, are you going in the in the correct slot? And Katrina is asking um, where I got the side clamps, right? They are Red Snapper brand as well. And the shop that makes them, they're available for purchase in different places, but the head shop that makes them is Quilts on the Corner. You can Google that. She has an online shop and all the Red Snapper stuff is available there. And that is where I got my side clamps. And they come in differing lengths. Jamie, do you keep a ruler base on your machine at all times? I don't. And the reason I don't is because I don't do a lot of ruler work. And when you have a ruler base on, it um, shortens how far forward you can pull your machine, right? Because that base extends a bit further, so you lose a couple inches of quilting space. I don't want to give that up for my style of quilting, so I don't leave a ruler base on, no. And someone's asking what stitch length for basting. I had four stitches per inch on, so basically quarter inch. And yes, I did just sew over my pin. But there's no quilt police here, so I just did it. in that little bit of basting, take the pin out, and here we go for our loops again. trying to focus on on stretching my loops a little bit more for the person that asked you know you're not getting all the way to the seams so now that I've kind of got in the rhythm of it I am focusing on that trying to get right to the edges as best I can
You guys didn't know I could be quiet this long, did you? Time for a few more questions and once again i encourage you to hit like and subscribe smash the bell i always chuckle at the youtubers that say it smash that bell um what that does is send you notifications whenever i am in fact live which is handy and a few um technical details about today because i don't know that i've said them all at any point i am working on a bernina q24 I'm just checking that I took my other clamp off. Yes, I did. Um, I am quilting entirely freehand. I am using Isocord 100% polyester thread. And it is a 40 weight, but it's it's fine. And quilts kind of like a 50. It has a little bit of sheen to it in a kind of rich brown color. Autumnal brown. It's not a deep chocolate brown. And what else? I think that's all the products I'm using. So I'm just basting the final edge. I don't know if I say this often enough, honestly. Not all quilters do this basting. Um, and some do more basting. Some do lines horizontally on their quilt and do more. But I do know there are some quilters who don't baste at all. And I gotta say, from my personal point of view, this is a non-negotiable. This is not a corner I ever cut. Um, the resulting squareness and evenness of the quilt is just something I'm definitely not willing to compromise by just winging it. And I'm just trotting around the machine and putting my uh, channel lock in place. And on this machine, what that does is holds the belt, the driver belt, in a fixed location, so I just have to turn that on and off. It's just a little lever. And what that does is give me this lovely straight line. I'm just going to push it back a hair um, on the bottom edge of my quilt. It just it gives me a guide. Since the machine is stitching in a perfectly straight line now, if I line my quilt up to that, then I know that I've got a straight edge on the bottom of my quilt. And it just pleases me to produce very nice and square quilts. I know you're wondering what I'm doing, but I'm just shifting it a fraction of space. So yeah, my line is not perfectly straight. I think across the width of the quilt, I might shift it maybe an eighth of an inch. So to me, that's an acceptable level of squareness. Okay, trotting around to take that channel lock off. And you notice I forgot to put the basting stitch on. See, that is new to me. I've always just done my basting with the same stitch as I've quilted just to save time. And I thought with this machine, I'm going to try a new skill and get used to that. I didn't get it opened up. And clearly I have not got fully used to it yet. So, it doesn't really matter because it's all going to get hidden in the binding. And you can do whatever works for you. And I may end up coming back to this way because it just saves... It just saves fiddling with changing stitch length. And you can see here, I've actually, I'm at the back. Maybe you can see, I'm not seeing what's on the camera, hun. Um, right behind my needle, I didn't quite get to the last basting stitch. There's about an inch of gap. I'm not going to worry about that. That is not going to prove a runaway problem. 
for Laura as she's binding it. Let me just get my side clamp on and we'll take a couple of questions. And if you are watching this in a replay, I do my best to get back and answer the questions after the fact, too. I really do try. So, okay, we have a question, apparently. Lots of questions. I love questions. Roxanne, what needle do you use? My thread has been breaking, and I think it's my needle. This is a... Hang on a second. Let me just pull it up so I make sure and say it to you correctly. Let me get my needles here. See, this is one of the things they don't tell you about when you have a new machine, too. You just got to get used to where everything is again. I put it all away. I don't know if I can tell you off the top of my head. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. It is a 130-705. Universal. So it's not a special needle by any means. So there we go. It's a 130-705 universal needle um, that's a pretty average size. It's not ballpoint or anything. Any more questions? Here we go. Vicky. On my take-up bar, the canvas leader has become cricked. I unrolled it and found it has just been taped. How do I straighten it and how to keep from doing it again? That's probably a great question for people who have a similar brand as you. If you're on Facebook, I strongly recommend joining a group or two of people with similar brands because they'll have experienced similar things. Um, I think all the leaders I've ever seen have been taped one way or another. That's a very common way of attaching them. Um, even my current one, this has really strong double stick tape and that is how the leaders are attached. So that's not uncommon, but if it needs straightening, perhaps it's new tape. I'm not 100% sure there. Remove it, reapply it, like that might be enough to just straighten it up again. Christine, Stump Susan, per Dave's request, what is your next YouTube milestone? I I don't really know what YouTube's next milestone would be. Is there one at 10,000 followers? So Mr. Producer thinks that at 10,000 subscribers, you, you get something. I don't know. I know that you get like a, like a silver, like the YouTube play button that's always in red with the little play arrow. You get a silver play plaque like that at a hundred thousand subscribers so if you could make that happen <laughs> be my guest but I'm not sure what other milestones there are between between there and here but I tell you what it is definitely true that your interaction your liking like you're clicking the thumbs up and also your comments really fuels the algorithm and and starts putting my videos in front of more people so I really appreciate that honestly and I missed that question I'm sorry Dave in my talking what are the laser lights for? How do you like your new machine? The laser lights are the two cameras that are um, the stitch regulator. So they take, I believe it's, I believe it's four or 5,000 images per second of my textile moving over them. And that's how the stitch regulator works. And they're just red because that's Bernina red, but they have to be lights. And how do I like the machine? I'm liking the machine fine. It is certainly, you're, you're seeing me fumble at times this morning, right? Like with which button do I hit? Because all those things which were absolutely second nature that I never thought about, I now have to think about. And when I'm quilting at home by myself, it's going pretty smoothly. When I got on camera and I'm trying to talk and think about them, <laughs> sometimes it doesn't work so smoothly. But Angie, curious if your table is in sections or one continuous table. So the, the, the wooden flat base on top, that is in sections. But the frame of it, that's all one piece. Like one length. Christine, how do you shift it without going to the back to release the lock? Um, when I'm advancing the quilt, I assume you mean. The, the take-up bar is ratcheted, and I won't open that lock until I'm dismounting the quilt, right? So I just keep, there's a wheel to turn and I just keep ratcheting it up. So I unlock the front, wind it up on the back, lock the front back up when I'm advancing. Joan, I don't see a measuring tape or toggles on a line to mark the left and right edges of the quilt top. Is Susan doing something new? Well, Joan, Susan isn't really. Let me grab the tape measure for those who don't know what it is. It is right here beside me. 
This is a long armor's tape measure and it's very long as you can see. Very, very, very long. It stretches right across um, my quilt tops. And I do not have a good spot on this frame to attach it on both ends. So at this point, it's just laying in my little storage area beside me and I just get it out whenever I want to use it on a quilt. I saw someone the other day who had attached one of these to their dead bar. So see, that's a tip for me. I might try that because then it's always there, right? As you're advancing the quilt, it's always right there. Because I use this, Joan was mentioning that, I usually know, you know, what my left hand measurement is and what my right hand measurement is. And every time I advance the quilt, I can make it that same size, right? To keep it straight. So that's one of the little fiddly things I need to get a system worked out for. Judy Johnson, do you miss Lucy? Well, I don't yet because she's right in the next room. I have a storage room right next door and that's where she is. But honestly, no. Like I love my machines and I feel like a partner with them, but I'm not sentimentally attached. So I did, you guys won't have ever seen this on camera, I don't think, but overhead, there's a little um, lip in the ceiling that has, you know, vent ducting in it. And I had an I Love Lucy sign hanging there, which one of my dear friends gave me when I got my first Lucy. So I've always had an I Love Lucy sign in my sewing room. This machine didn't feel like a Lucy, so I wasn't sure what to do with that. But I have an Instagram friend who does have a long arm, which is named Lucy. So I sent her the sign so she could enjoy it. So... More questions? Uh, just one on the leader. Roxanne, my leader had a bend in it and I sprayed it with water and straightened it out. Maybe that will help you as well. Ah, so this is to the lady whose who's leader has a crick in it. Yeah, and I think steam or starch is not a bad option if it's got like, if it's twisted. You know, if the grain of it is twisted, that might not be a bad option for straightening it. I'm not exactly sure what your problem is, but. Okay, shall we get back to quilting, folks? Oh, there's more. Oh gosh, there's more. Catherine, Susan, that is where I attached my tape measure on the dead bar. Okay, so more of you are doing that. And I assume just with double stick tape as well. Babs, I really appreciate your videos. I'm a new long armor and it makes me more comfortable having your process to watch. Thank you. I enjoy your style. You're a great teacher. Thanks so much. I always say, this is what I wish I'd had, you know, as a novice quilter. And what's so difficult to find because you can't just like run your long arm to your friend's house and quilt alongside each other, can you? So... I hopefully, hopefully this fills that need. Let's get quilting. dark fabrics are very difficult to see on. Um, again, when I'm not on camera, my solution to that would be to have some type of lighting from the side. So either a small light attached to my machine, or in my case, I have a floor lamp, and I turn my room lights out, and my machine lights out, and just have that strong light from the side, and that really helps when you're having trouble with visibility on, you know, closely printed fabrics.
This is a great design to practice moving your feet while you quilt so you don't have to pause. It's funny, it's the simplest little design, but it's one that I find really difficult to keep smooth if I pause. Wrote a bobbin thread. So one of the features of this machine is that it has a bobbin sensor is not even quite the right word. Um, you literally program in how many yards are on your bobbin and then it will give you a percentage reading all the time. Well what I have not fully figured out yet is exactly how many yards are on my bobbin because I've been messing a little bit with my bobbin winder. It was winding a little too full and making my bobbin a bit too fluffy. So then I adjust, you know, how much it winds and then I have to figure out again, okay, how many yards are on the bobbin. So I'm back to my old method, which is let the thing run out and then get a fresh bobbin. And I just dropped my little blue seam ripper there so I can find where I was easily. And I've already got a new one loaded. I just have to put it in. And speaking of experimenting, I doubt that it was visible to you, but since I last did a live and unscripted, we lowered the machine by two inches. I was finding that the height that I had it at was just a little too much. My arms felt like they were always up in the air. And so down we went by two, and we'll just see how that goes for a week or two. I'm just going to do a little bit of stitching here on the edge to check my tension. Run a fingernail over it. That all feels good in the bottom. All right. Felt right, but the bobbin is not in there quite right yet because it actually popped the bobbin thread. See, this is what reality looks like, you guys. And I feel like still my bobbin is a little bit full. I'm just going to unwind a yard or two. When it brushes against the outside of the casing, it's too full. And what happens is then your bobbin is not, you know, unspooling smoothly. And your machine starts making funny tension, top or bottom. So I just took a couple yards off just to make sure that's not still happening. Here's my join. I'm just going to overstitch about a quarter inch um, of my last stitching line. I'm just going to line it up, put a few lock stitches in place, overlap it about a quarter inch. Mr. Producer says there's something I've simply got to see. Last pass. Ask your questions before we finish. Okay, Joan, let Susan know I noticed her machine was lower. I'm a mom of eight. I'm only alive because I noticed nearly everything. Ah, oh, Joan, you are great. <laughs> and you know I might lower it again like I'm still feeling like I don't know I was doing some ruler work yesterday and it was just definitely too high and uncomfortable for that so it's all a matter of experimentation isn't it Okay, and my thread just broke, and I, I felt that one. I don't know that you guys could see it, but there was just a little nudge, and I was like, yeah, something's wrong. And I always say, as much as you can, be really attuned to your machine, and then when it stutters or when it doesn't feel or doesn't sound quite right, you know, you recognize that. And when that happens, take the time to stop, because you'll be sorry if you didn't like the video outlet. You'll be sorry. So 
I do not know what that problem was. I'm just going to re-thread my bobbin, start it up again, Let's see what happens. This is all part of the reality show. Okay, I forgot to drop my blue seam ripper in there. Where was I? The good news is the starts and stops will not show. Nobody will ever find them. I'm just going to undo an inch or two. I don't know that you can see me at all. Just because probably the tension wasn't quite right when the thread was breaking, right? So those last, oh, I don't know, 20 stitches or so aren't going to be good tension underneath. I can't actually see that. It looks fine from on top, but chances are good that it's poor underneath. So I just take the time to back up a little bit. Similarly, when a bobbin runs out, the same thing. You know it hasn't had proper tension those last few inches, so it's a good idea to um, undo a little bit of it. Okay, so same lock stitch procedure. I've overlapped by about a quarter inch what was previously sewn. Four or five lock stitches in place. And off we go. And it's not right. So again, I don't know that you guys can feel or hear that. Obviously you can't feel it. You might have heard it because it's actually sounding not right. So now I'm going to look a little deeper. When it happens twice, I'm like, yeah, that's not a coincidence. So I'm going to go ahead and undo all the way to my lash join. And um, I'm going to turn on my light. So bear with me while I do that because I can't see a thing. And I know it will make it difficult for you guys when it's on. But I've got to see. Let me see here. Still getting used to where everything is. Right there, right there. There we go. I've got to see to undo. So what I'm feeling now, I can... Can they see David, my close-up camera? It won't be super clear. But I can literally feel when I run my finger across the stitching that it's tight underneath. I've got this bubble going on. And that's what I was feeling was like resistance. It wasn't, the thread was not flowing smoothly. And truly, I have learned. When it doesn't feel quite right, don't just muscle through it. Stop. Something isn't quite right. You guys get to see me undo. And it's not very graceful because I'm working in super close quarters here, but we'll get it done. Actually, I'll try and show you because it is a handy little tip. I wrote this one from another quilter too. Once you get a few stitches undone so that you've got a tail that you can hang on to, which is here, hold on that tight, almost to breaking point of the thread. And then you can slide your seam ripper under, break a stitch or two, and a half inch or more will come undone. Sometimes an inch like that, see? Just by putting quite a lot of tension on that top thread. You still see? Anyway, when you don't have machine and camera in the way, it worked quite slick. It does leave bottom threads that you have to pull out. But it is pretty quick. Let's pull all those thready bits out. We're going to thread the bobbin one more time, and then we're going to go do a little bit of stitching off on the side until we get it right. And I do have a needle threader, but I'm not very... Um, you have to get the feel for it, and it takes me longer to use the needle threader than to thread the needle at this point. But that's one of those things I shall make myself practice until I get it figured out. Um, maybe I'm going to go back a little further. I didn't realize that that thread came out, but it wasn't all the way back to my last join. And I think I want to go back to the last join. I don't want a whole bunch of stops and starts. My word, this is hard to see. Wow. So did we mention this is a reality show? This is part of the bit that we did not script or plan. But here it is. And this is indeed reality. This happens. I'm trying to keep my hands in such a way that you guys can see. I don't know if it's working. I 
because usually I would be pulling the thread. Here's my stitching line, right? And I would pull that way. If I pull against my stitches, it's going to break sooner. So usually I pull the other way and I pull literally till almost breaking point of the thread. And if it's a thread you use often, you'll know what that point is. And then it's pretty slick. Again, this whole mess. All those threads now come out. And I'm just making a little pile on my batting off the quilt at the moment. I don't have a good re thread receptacle, but I do want to get them all off the quilt. Best I can. I think that's all of them. Nope, there's a few more. It's like when you give your kids a buzz cut and there's always one more, one more sticking up. Okay. Let us re-thread the bobbin one more time. Let's see if we can figure out what is causing that breakage. It is definitely not over full anymore. I'm going to run it through my bobbin gauge again, although I did do that earlier when I loaded the bobbin, but just in case. Looking good. We'll pull a nice long piece. Yep, nice and smooth and even. Beautiful. Hmm. Okay, bobbin's in. Bear with me a second. I'm going to grab a little fabric scrap and show you something else here. Um, dum -de dum Okay, I've just gone and grabbed a piece that was trimmed off one of my other quilts, okay? And I'm just going to put this on, I've got a little bit of batting beside my quilt and backing, and I'm just going to do a little bit of practice stitching in that area to try and figure out what's what. You watch, it'll work like a charm, and that'll be great! Okay, turn the light off so you guys can see. So I'm just off the edge of my quilt. I guess I better move it a little further. I can't really see my quilt edge. There we go. So I'm going to quilt a bit. I'm going to do a couple of loops and do a couple of corners. Those are kind of my acid test. For the tension. Can it make points at corners and can it do smooth loops without pulling up? It seems to be working great, but I am going to go ahead and have a look underneath there a bit. It seems to be good. I'm just going to lower my top tension a touch. Okay, so we have questions about that thread break. Let's talk. I imagine some of you are suggesting too. Hopefully some of the things I in fact did try. Notice you didn't have to take out stitches when the bobbin ran out. Does Stella maintain great stitches even at the end of the bobbin? Um, Christine, I thought I did take out a few honestly when the bobbin ran out, but she does maintain good stitches until about the last three inches, so... It's not very much. Sue, why don't you do the dangle test with the bobbin to check bobbin tension? That's a great question, Sue. And I have done that, and in fact, that's all I had for a long time. I didn't have the Tawa or the Bernina gauge. But the beauty of the gauge is it gives you one extra test. You notice, maybe you didn't see when I was pulling through it, I pull like a good foot of thread, and it's not only how snug it is, but also how smoothly it's releasing. So if my tension goes bub, 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 then I know that's not smooth, right? So I do like the gauge for that extra assurance. 
Um, Christine, did the top thread bounce out of a tension disc somewhere when the bobbin ran out? Maybe that's what's causing the thread problems now. That's actually a great idea. Um, I can feel that there is still tension on the top and I'm familiar with what that should feel like exactly. And I would say it still feels right. Now, if the problem keeps persisting, I may in fact rethread the whole thing. But at this point, it seems to be sewing fine. So we are gonna give it, oh, sorry. More questions before I get back to sewing. Question, are you pulling the bobbin thread and cutting the needle thread? I am pulling up the bobbin thread and cutting both. Robin, I've also found with my Q16 on Studio Frame that shutting off the machine and rebooting after a bobbin change fixes the thread breakage issue. Actually, that's a really good point. If this does not work, maybe that's what I'll consider doing. Difficult to reboot um, on camera, but Roxanne, this makes me feel better. I have the same problem when I change bobbins. You know, it's just not that uncommon. You change a, a variable and sometimes it takes a little tweaking to get it going again. Yeah. Okay, apparently there are more questions, but I think I'll go ahead and finish quilting and then as I'm undoing it, we'll chat a little bit more before we go. Again, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Smash that there bell so you get notifications. <laughs> Just going a little bit slowly and really paying attention to what it feels like. And it seems to be good. It's funny, sometimes you never know what the actual problem was. You just keep trying things. Sometimes you've been trying the same things repeatedly and all of a sudden it's up and away.
And I'm just trying to fill in these so it looks as though they continued right off the edge of the quilt. There we are, and a few lock stitches. And we are finished. Grab those thread tails from my splice. Good to go. Okay, I shall move Stella out of the picture a little bit. And we'll take a few more questions and comments. Maybe if we want to do a side shot, Dave, I can show where I did this little sample stitching here for a second. Can you see I was working right on the side here? I have this little leftover um, area, this best side you can see better, leftover area, right, of backing beyond the edge of my quilt. So I just put a strip of fabric on there. It's a great place to just practice if you're having some tension issues to just test them out. All right, we are finished. A few more sips of lukewarm, coldish coffee. <laughs> and I am standing well back from the quilt. I don't wanna slosh my coffee on it. Okay, Cindy, I've never advanced my quilt without cutting thread, moving the sew head to the side, advancing, etc. No one told me to do it that way, so it's great to see what you're doing. Um, I have found it to work fine. It, you know, there there is an argument that having the needle down and rolling the quilt, you know, it's pulling at that point. That could be stretching the fabric. I don't have any trouble with that because I base my edges, because I'm working on this style of comfort quilts, I find that it's absolutely fine. So it does save time. It also helps you remember to go back and forth, right? Amy, would I need to baste around three sides on a Bernina Q16 or baste the quilt another way? This is all new to me. Thanks in advance. Okay, your Q16, are you on a table though or on a frame? So clarify that for me and, and then I'll answer that. I'm gonna guess you're on a, on a table, but. Um, Noreen, I'm at the end of my batting bolt and the batting is very wrinkled. How do you resolve this? If you have a steamer, that is one way to do it. The lowest tech way and the easiest and what I usually do is throw it in the dryer with a wet towel um, and steam it that way. And it doesn't fully take them out, but relaxes them a great deal. That also works for folded up pieces of batting, like when you buy yardage that's folded. Judy, when doing ruler work in continuous stitch mode, is your machine speed slower than when doing edge to edge? Oh yes, way, way, way slower. I mess with that stitch, even depending on edge to edge designs. Some designs I move faster than others. So yes, definitely, you know, pace it to what you're doing. Dorothy, is it better to do the front side of the loop first and then the back one? I'm not really following that. Like I feel like if I'm looping, I can only I can only go toward the right or go toward the left, but I'm always going to be proceeding through my loop in forwards motion. If I didn't if I didn't catch what you were asking, just ask it again. Any more? Barbara. I noticed you tugging on the quilt as you basted the bottom. Are you lining it up with something or just smoothing? I pin my top, so I usually try to baste as I pull pins out, but that doesn't always work. I I was lining it up with something. I had the uh, channel lock on so my machine was stitching in a perfect horizontal line so I was tugging on it a bit um, to try and keep that line perfectly straight and as you saw I did have to adjust a couple times just a couple threads worth. Diane uh, spritz it with water and relax it overnight absolutely that works well too yep all good suggestions I'll let you read them Noreen. Cindy I didn't real oh, oh okay got it it's a little different typing, but the same type of question, but we answered it. Robin, learn something new today on how to just seam ripper on the frame. Oh yeah, I hardly ever, um, I don't know when I've ever taken a quilt off to undo it off the frame. I think early on, you know, I occasionally had a half quilt problem and I wasn't quick enough to clue in uh, to stuff, but I, I seldom do anymore. I do my ripping on the frame. Yeah, it keeps it snug and easy to reach and it's just easier. Cindy, thanks so much for real problems. That's how I usually learn. Have a great rest of your day, Dave and Susan. Thanks, Cindy. Same to you. Yeah, again, that is my hope with this quilting reality show is that you do get to see. You know, it's kind of like lifting off the cover and like, this is what it really looks like when we're quilting. It's not prettied up. So I hope that is. 
helpful and encouraging. Okay, is that it for questions? That's it. Okay, Mr. Producer is just conveying some things to me here. Bear with us. Here we go. If you all would like a show showing behind the scenes, cameras, lights, the studio setup, etc., email Susan. <laughs> I'll twist her arm if enough of you are interested. You know, it's a funny thing. It's it's seldom is pretty behind the scenes. You know, and even this morning, I'll be 100% honest. We were kind of rushing around saying, okay, where does the, where are the camera angles? What corners of the room do we see and what do we need to pick up? But I try and use that as a tool because I do like working in an orderly space. So I try to use that as a tool to motivate me, like go ahead and put away the rulers and put away the things. Um, it just so happens today was very behind the scenes because we actually were lowering the machine this morning. And so we had a level and we had a power jack and we had all <laughs> the things. So, you know, we just got them put all away and that was lovely. But yes, if you want to see more of behind the scenes, like I'm willing to show that it's, you know, you can't manage window light and things like that as well. So it's hard to get the lighting other than my one little cocoon of space. But we would do our best if anyone's interested, you know, what cameras we use or mounts or things like that. We're happy to share all that stuff. Christine, and I'm sorry I missed that, Dave. We'd love to see. The quilt as you take it off the frame so it shows the true quilting. Oh, actually, I can totally do that right now. It just takes a moment. I'm just going to cut my funny tail off here. And I keep strips like this for that reason. For doing these little test samples, um, occasionally I've done episodes where I've showed you where you need to add a little extension on. So these three, four, five inch um, leftover bits are super handy for that. So when I take the quilt off, I like to let my front leader relax till I get it in the position where I would start loading my next one. And then I put clamps on either end just because it saves time when I go to load the next one, right? If it's all in place and ready to go. So you couldn't see that one, but I think you can perhaps see this one. I'll move Stella just a little. Ooh, you can almost see. That's as far as I can go. Just in this corner, I've just clipped this corner of my leader so that it now is gonna stay right here, ready to load my next quilt. And then off come those clamps. And these red snappers, by the way, are the draw this evening. Remember, I'm going to be on the WhatNot app. And um, we've put links in the notes, but it's whatnot.info forward slash stitched by Susan. And we're going to have a drawing. Everyone who um, signs up in the app and then appears for the live show will get a chance at these red snappers, a whole set of them. Enough for a frame the same size as mine, a 12-foot frame. I'm just kind of working in close quarters here. This is why I don't usually do it on camera because we're, we're all attached via cables to Dave at the other end. So here's the back. There we go. You can see that. And the back does have light-ish fabrics. So my dark thread does show a little on that, but it's a pleasing look. I promise I'll post pictures. And there's the front. And I'm just moving it a little. Maybe the light will catch it. Anyway, that's it. I will take a few shots this afternoon and post pictures. And you can get a good look at it. Thanks so much for joining me once again. I am Susan Smith. You're in my studio, Stitched by Susan. Live and unscripted episodes generally happen the first and third Friday of every month. And whenever I have to change that schedule, I'll let you know in my newsletter. Like and subscribe. Share this episode with your friends that you think would enjoy this style of quilting. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.